Now let's go to regression analysis. A regression analysis is a statistical tool used to model the dependence of a variable on one or more explanatory variables. Now in the previous lessons, we used correlation to determine if linear relationships exist between two variables. And we used the Pearson correlation coefficient R to determine the strength and direction of the correlation. If ever we find that a relationship exists between the two variables, we can proceed to determine the equation of the regression line. So what is a regression line? Regression line is also known as the line of best fit. This indicates a linear relationship between the dependent variables on the y and the independent variables on the x-axis. So since the two variables are linearly related, then of course, we can now compute for or find the equation of their line. Okay, so the change in one variable is dependent on the changes to the other variable. So its significance is in it enables us to interpret data trends and help us in making predictions based on that data. So this equation of the line, you may also take a look at this or look at this at, as a function. Okay, so the other one is dependent on the other variable. So this is now our equation. We have y is equal to a plus bx. So are you familiar with this? So it looks like the equation of a line using the slope form. Now y is equal to mx plus b. So this time, this is our notation. So with that, b is our slope. Now y is equal to mx plus b. So attached to x is our slope or b. So it means it is the steepness. So how steep is our graph or our line is? So is it like this? Is it sloping to the right or sloping to the left? or no slope at all and a is our y intercept okay what is y intercept it is the point where our graph intersect the y axis and the formulas for this slope and y intercept are given below so these two where n is the number of data pairs. Now, the rounding rule for both a and b is up to three decimal places. Or for consistency, we'll just use at least, no, at least na lang siguro, three decimal places. So, let's have this first example. Given the data below, find the equation of the regression line and provide the interpretation of the result. So, the number of study hours of these students Six students are given and of course their final grade in mathematics so solutions so based on this we have this final answer y equals a, a plus bx of course but we need first to find our a and b so take note we only need a, an additional column for x squared so there's no y squared, so that's why we have x squared, and also xy. So just add two columns. And again, at the bottom, just take the sum for each column. So we have this, xy, so just multiply, 2 times 79 is 158. 3 times 83 is 249. 5 times 85 is 425, and so on. And here, in x squared column, so we have x squared so 2 squared is 4 3 squared is 9 5 squared is 25 and so on and last at the bottom just take the sum so 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 9 plus 11 plus 15 is equal to 45 similarly the sum of this column is 517 this column 3998 and this column is 
So we have this data, the data from or at the bottom. So first, let's have the y-intercept or a. So we have this equation. So summation of y, so our y is 517. Summation of x squared, we have 465. Summation of x is 45. Summation of xy is 3998. Then on the denominator, we have n is 6 because there are 6 students. Summation of x squared is 465 minus the summation or the square of the summation of x, so 45 squared. Okay, so this one, 45 squared. So use your calculator. So the first product is 240,405. This one is 179,910. And on the denominator, we have these values. So you may check. You may use your calculator. So this is then equal to uh, 60,495 divided by 765. So therefore, our y-intercept is 79.078, so three decimal places. Now let's go to the slope. We have this equation for our slope. So our n is 6, summation of xy is 3998, summation of x is 45, summation of y is 517. Then on the denominator, we have n is 6. Summation of x squared is 465, and summation of uh, the square of the summation of x is 400, uh, 45 squared. So if you notice, the denominators for a and b are just the same. Okay, they're just the same, the denominators. So use your calculator to check these values. So we have 723 divided by 765. Therefore, our slope is 0 0.945. Thus, our equation of the regression line for this problem is 79.078 plus 0.945x. So, let's go to the interpretation. So, let's have this term, marginal change. So, marginal change is the magnitude of the change in one variable when the other variable changes exactly one unit. So take note here, our y variable is dependent to x. So when our x changes, then a marginal change will occur. Okay, If our x changes, our ma a marginal change will occur because y is dependent to the values of x. So in the problem, the value of the slope b is, uh, which is 0.945, this is our marginal change, you know, whenever we change our x. So this means that for every change in the value of x, which is the number of r's, the value of y, which is the grade, also changes at 0.945 unit on the average. Okay, so meaning, if you study more or, or longer hours of study, is being done then of course your grade will increase okay by 0.945 okay similarly the value of the y intercept a is 79.078 this means that the grade of a student would be 79 if she will not, or he or she will not study at all. Okay, so zero hours of study. So meaning stock knowledge lang. So he or she can get a 79% as his grade. Okay, when x is zero, so his possible grade, you know, possible grade is 79. That's why we can now predict the possible values of our y. Now, one of the advantages of this regression line is we can predict the value of the dependent variable because y depends on x. 
Now let's have this. Given the data below, find the equation of the regression line and provide an interpretation of this result. So this time we have five students and we have this number of days absence, absent or the absences of the students incurred in their class, then their respective scores. So the same additional columns, we have the xy and x squared. So xy, we have 1 times 47, 2 times 40, 80, 3 times 35, 105, 4 times 27, 108, 5 times 15, 75. And for x squared, just square all the excess. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 20, uh, 16, and 5 squared is 25. And at the bottom, just take the sum. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15. Similarly, do the same, do the same, and do the same. And again, summarize the result. We have this. Okay, and compute for the y-intercept. So again, we'll use the formula. So 164 is our summation of y. Summation of x squared is 55. Minus summation of x is 15, summation of xy is 415. Divided by n, which is 5, times summation of x squared, so we have 55, minus the square of the summation of x, which is 15. Then you may use your calculator to verify these values. So our y-intercept is 55.9. B. So our slope. So the same formula from, from our previous example. So we have uh, 5 times 415. So n times the summation of xy. So we have here 5 and summation of xy 415. Summation of x is 15. Summation of y is 164. Then divided by these values. So the same with our a. So they have the same denominator. So we have this. So the slope is negative 7.7, .7, meaning our line leans towards the left. So the lines look like this, pa left. So y is equal to 55.9 minus 77.x. So the slope is now negative. So let's interpret. So for every change in the value of x, which is the number of absences, the value of y, which is the grid, also changes at negative 7.7 .7 unit on the average. So meaning, as your absences increases, your score decreases. On the average, it decreases by negative 7.7. .7. Okay? As your number of absences increases, your score decreases and lastly if the student has no absences so meaning x is zero then we can say that he can surely perfect the math quiz okay because the maximum score for the math quiz is 50 okay so he can surely perfect the math quiz since if x is zero our y is 55.9 so that is more than the perfect score 50 so he can surely perfect the math quiz